I'm suffering so much. Did you fill in a worksheet? Yeah. What's the situation? Uh, it's my mother. Okay, so sweetheart, let's, let's meet your mother, which is not going to happen. We're going to meet her mother's daughter. <laughs> so sweetheart, read what you've written. What is the situation with your mother? I'm angry with Jane because she shamed me and questioned my judgment and basically told me I was wrong. Okay, so Jane shamed you. What is the situation? Where are you in that moment she shamed you? I'm at home. I'm on the phone with her. Okay, so she shamed you. Is that true? Yes. She shamed you. Can you absolutely know that it's true that she shamed you? Yes. And how do you react on that phone call? How do you react? What happens when you think that thought? I feel terrible, awful, helpless, hopeless, angry, furious, enraged. Now on the phone with your mother, who would you be without this thought? She shamed me as you listened to her. I could just be free. Yeah, so what did she, what was she saying? Um, I had uh, appendicitis a month ago, uh -huh. and I had surgery, and I was recovering, and I told my mother that it turned out that I'd had three previous episodes of this same pain, but I didn't know that it was appendicitis at the time, and she said, basically, it could have perforated, you could have died. Mm -hmm. Okay, so say that to what me. What were you thinking? So, so say that to me. Mother, you know, I had, I, I had this as I look back like three times even before this. And then your mother says, Well, you could have died. You know, it's true. <laughs> My gosh, you know, we think so alike. <laughs> And I hear you say it could have perforated. You know it could have. Aren't we, be, aren't we lucky to be talking like this on the phone? I feel so connected to you. I told her. You know I what said I love about you? You never shame me. You haven't met my mother. She's a therapist, by the way. That's the, that is the coup. Yeah, that's, that's the cream, cream of the, on the cake. Yeah, she nice shamed me. Turn it around, I. I can say it. I shamed me. But yes, in that I'm not moment, in that moment, where did you shame you? In just in that moment when she said it could have perforated, it could have killed you, where did you shame you in that moment? She was telling the truth, one that you agree with. So something was off. Where was it you shamed you? I don't know. There's an example in there. She just said what I was already afraid of, and so I shamed myself because I didn't allow myself to feel how terrified I was. Yes. So she just said what I was already Thinking. Thinking. And I'd already blamed myself. I mean, I'm an effing doctor. So there's, another, so there's another one. <laughs> shame you, shame you, shame you. Yeah. So you just popped out with all these examples. Yeah. And I was pissed that she was pointing out all this stuff that I'd already beat myself up for. <sighs> so who shamed you? Me. Yeah, so just, and, and when you find these amazing truths like this, you know, just sit in it. You know, someone said, how do you get it to stick? Be with it. Because your mind at some point will say, yeah, but she, and just notice and come back in the ways you shame you. Because if you do it there, you do it 
It recurs with your patients. It recurs with the people you work with. It recurs with your mom again. It recurs with your family. It's, it's like that. So this deserves some sitting in. I mean, if we can sit in our suffering, we can certainly sit in our enlightenment and support it. Until every little cell gets it, it's, it's not done. Allow it just to permeate. Stillness, honoring, respecting this beautiful gift that, that we find each time we, we sit in this power that you show us so beautifully. I love sitting with people like you that heal us because you're so open to healing when you see it. That was... So, sweetheart, um, she shamed me. There's another turnaround. I, I shamed her. So, in that situation, where is it that you shamed her? I said, Mom, don't say this. I've already been over this. I've already beat myself up. I, I so threw you it shamed back. her for pointing out her, her. Her, what she was seeing regarding your health and welfare, her little girl. And she, she was loves scared me. too. Yeah. She, she loves me. And I wish that she could have just said, Saskia, I love you. Oh, and I was terrified. That's beautiful. So turn it around. I wish I would have said. <laughs> that's a hard one. I don't feel it. I don't feel that I love her. So turn it around to yourself. I wish I... I wish I loved me. I wish I would have said, Sasha, I love you. So try that. You know, this is so powerful. What I want my mother to say to me, I mean, if she's not available, who is? I'm not available for that. Yeah. So you projected it onto her. And you didn't give her direction. You shamed her instead. And you didn't think, you didn't set out to shame her. It's just like shooting from the hip. You believe it goes out. It's how you react when you believe the thought. I wanted her to soothe me instead of me soothing me, which is my biggest struggle. <laughs> yeah, it's um, wonderful to come home to the only help you're ever really going to find, and that's your own. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of depressing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and very empowering. I mean, after all, your mother just wasn't, you know, there's nothing she can say or do that your mind will not override and twist. You know, in, as we see in this example. And that's not personal. It's how the mind works. It's not out to hurt her or you. It's just out to save its own life, its own identity. I am the one that knows that you are the one hurting me. My mother shamed, your mother shamed you, is it true? No. Okay, precious, let's look at the at statement too. I want Jane to tell me she's glad I'm doing well and how amazing my body is. I want her to stop shaming me. So you got the second one. She stopped shaming you. You know, forgiveness is seen that what I thought happened didn't. It's like, I thought she shamed me, she didn't. There's nothing to forgive. That's complete. Okay, so... Read that first one again. I mean, that 
read the first part of statement two again? I want Jane to tell me she is glad I'm doing well and how amazing my body is. Okay. Is that true you want her in that moment? Is that true that's what you want her to tell you? Yes. And how do you react when you think that thought, that that is what you want her to tell you? I feel all twisted up inside. And do you get silent? Do you get cold? Do you get snippy? Do you get... All of the above. Okay. So those are, those are the ways, that's how we react when we believe the thought, some of us. And then if you really sit in these to notice how you react, the next time those emotions happen, your mind just gets it. It's in something that needs to be questioned, or you'll just wake up like that. Every little body thing that goes on, you know, when you have witnessed it in this way, for example, in that third question, it is that, again, it's like that little temple bell that says, ah, look to your head, something's going on. So I want her to tell me that she is glad I'm doing well. Who would you be without that thought? So close your eyes and listen to your mother on the phone. Listen to her. Say you could have. I could be at peace. Okay. So close your eyes again and listen to her. Feel compassion for that mother. She's trying to get through to a daughter that's just shaming her. She doesn't know how to get through. She's lost. And also notice, sweetheart, how would she know that's what you want to hear? She's in the middle of a of a imagining her daughter's appendix bursting three times prior to that terrible surgery in her, to her mind's eye. In that moment, I could have appreciation for her that she cares about me, that she even gives a shit. Yeah. So let's turn it around. I want me to tell her. I want me to tell her that I am glad. That I am glad. That I am. That I'm doing so well and healed. Because she's a worried mommy. She's a worried mommy. So can you turn it around again? I want me to tell me. I want me to tell me that I'm doing well. That I'm glad I'm doing well. That I'm glad I'm doing well. That would substitute well for shaming your mother. That's what was in that space. I Say that again. Shaming your mother was in that space, as opposed to you telling you you were doing well. And I think that happened because I wanted her approval instead of caring more about what my yeah. opinion was. Mm -hmm. And if we keep it really simple, it's it's um, you thought she you believed she was shaming you. But it was the other way around. Remember, I am what I believe you to be in the moment I believe it. I am that. If I believe my mother's shaming me, it's because I'm shaming her. And that shames myself. And we can see clearly she wasn't. She said two facts to her mind. 
Okay, Precious, let's look at the next one. Jane should see that she's hurting me and pushing me away even more in our relationship. She should see that this makes me feel shamed, controlled, and awful. She should, she should just let me be. She should see that she's hurting you. Is that true? Yes. So close your eyes. Look at her. She's believing that her daughter was close to death. In those three, those three times that you, were, you felt the attacks. So in that moment, she's perceiving that. She should see that she is hurting you. Wow, no. <laughs> she, she can't see that. No. She doesn't care that I got MRIs before. She doesn't care that, that I'd gotten better each time. She just was worried. She doesn't care because she can't. That's really what you're saying. She can't. She's worried. She sees an image of you alone without her having your appendix burst. She can't get you. I mean, these are the images that go through our heads. But we want her to say these things specifically, like a script. <laughs> Mm. Ego, isn't it brilliant? Mm. It's just, I just, I, you, you've got to appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> if, <laughs> okay, so she should see that she is hurting me. On the phone with your mother, who would you be without the thought as you listen to her? I could just love her for, for caring and just love her for her fear, and... And, and here, I'd clearly, be... she's not shaming you. In fact, she's really in agreement with what you were thinking, yourself. And you were very frightened. She was frightened when she thought that. You were frightened when you thought that. She should see that she is hurting me, turned around. I, I should see that I'm hurting her. And I should see that I'm hurting me. And she's not doing that. You are. So she's simply stating... What you were already thinking. Your appendix could have burst. Could have killed you. Okay, sweetheart, read that whole thing. She should see that she, and read the whole sentence. She shouldn't see. She shouldn't see that she's hurting me. And keep reading. And pushing me away even more in our relationship. She shouldn't see that this makes me feel shamed, controlled, and awful. She shouldn't just let me be. Because if she were to let me be, then I wouldn't be here sitting with you. Well, learning. she didn't do anything. <laughs> Read it again like that all the way through and listen. She, that's not her. I mean, she couldn't. Read it again like that. She shouldn't see that she's hurting me and pushing me away. No, because she didn't. Shouldn't a a mother not want to hurt her daughter? She didn't. She said two things. Mm. You shamed you and blamed her. Innocently. Okay. <laughs> you keep reading, she shouldn't. She shouldn't see that this makes me feel shamed, controlled, and awful. She shouldn't just let me be.
why shouldn't she There's just There's no look? way she could have perceived any of that was going on. It was all in your head. She was worried about, you know, these images in her head of her daughter that could have died in an appendix. So that's where she was. You could have died your appendix could have ruptured. And you've got all these things that she's not even relating to. You're angry she didn't give them to you, and there's no way she could possibly know. Because her mind was wrapped up here. Yes. Yeah. So this is the illusion. So let's turn it around. I should see, and then put you on all of it. I should see that I'm hurting me and pushing me away even more in my relationship with myself. With myself. I should see that this makes me feel shamed, controlled, and awful. I should just let me be. Read it just like that again and take it in. I should see that I'm hurting me and pushing me away even more in my relationship to myself. That's so very true. I should see that this makes me feel shamed, controlled, and awful. I should just let me be. That last one is the hardest. Now, on that last one, read it. I should see. I should just let me be. I should let her be. I should let her be. And back up a little more on the should before that. I should see that this makes her feel shamed, controlled, and awful. Well, I certainly don't want to make her feel as badly as I feel. Simply because she's innocent. She didn't do anything. Except she said what you were already thinking. There was no shame, there was no blame, there was no... There was a mother's concern for her daughter. Can I say something here? Yeah. <laughs> She did say to me, Jeff is my husband. She did say, well, what would you have done if Jeff had been in so much pain he couldn't walk? I had told her the first time mm -hmm. that I had trouble walking, that I was mm -hmm. in so much pain. So, so what her would you tone... Do, but what would you do? What would I have done if my husband had been in so much pain he couldn't walk? Yes, what would you have done? She asked a simple question, what would you have done? Sweetie, maybe we should go to the ER. Do you think it's an appy? Do you think so it's there's your something answer. else? So there's your answer. Okay. It was a good question. <laughs> so she's allowed to say that kind of Stinging. What stinging tone thing in particular? What would you have done? <laughs> oh, that's a great question, Mom. What would I have done? Okay. I would have. You know, as a loving, caring human being, when people are upset, 
They sound like that. <laughs> She's really good at that. <laughs> and okay. I guess I am too. I would drop the I guess. <laughs> this is deep work. So read it again. T I'll turn it around. Um, the whole thing to your mother. I, I should see that my mother. I should see that I am hurting. I should see that that I'm hurting her, and pushing her away even more in our relationship. I should see that this makes her feel shamed, controlled, uh, controlled and awful. I should just let her be. Does it fit that way too? Yeah. Yeah. And any time you go at your mother like that, with that intention, you're going to feel it. And you don't like you when you do it. You're in confusion already, and so you strike back again because the mind feels justified, and then it comes back again, and it just you get deeper and deeper into this. this you know, the ego loves it. It is just so secure in that. Any time it hits victim, which is all the time, victim, <laughs> victim role, victim identity, it's secure. You know, can you imagine a planet where when it rains, we complain? <laughs> I mean, I'm a victim of the rain. I'm a victim of, I'm a, you know, it doesn't matter what does it. I'm a, I am, I think, <laughs> but that doesn't make it so. So, sweetheart, let's look at the next one. I need her to say she's so glad I'm well and then change the subject. I need her to say that I can trust my own judgment. So the first one, I need her to say she is glad I'm well. That's what you need to be happy. Consider your state of mind and consider her state of mind. If she said, I'm glad you're well, would you have bought it? Would that have made you happy? Not knowing my mother, no. Not considering what you were thinking and believing. In so in moments. the space that I was in. That's right. all you're ever going to have so, to look at here. Okay. So, no. I, I probably wouldn't have bought it. And remember, that fourth question is about it would make you happy. I need her to say she is glad I am well in that moment when you consider your state of mind, her state of mind. If she said that, would that have made you happy? Probably not. And what is your first statement? Statement one? I'm angry that she shamed me. Yeah. And if she said, um, I'm glad you're well, would that have made you happy? When you consider your state of mind, her state of mind? Probably not. So, um, who would you be without this, this thought that wouldn't have made you happy anyway? Probably not. I could just be free. To me, that's well. Okay, so turned around, I need me. I need me to say that I'm glad I'm well. And then change the subject. <laughs> I need me to say that I can trust my own judgment. And that's, that's a big issue over and over in my life. It is, because you, you know, what you're projecting onto her gives, gives her all the power, but that's not your mother. That's the problem. It's who you believe your mother to be. You believe her to be someone shaming you, but that's not her in this situation. Thank you. I need me to tell my mother that I am glad I'm well. 
I need me to tell my mother I'm glad I'm well. And then change the subject. I need me to say to her that I can trust my own judgment. Okay, sweetheart. One reason we don't trust our own judgment is, let's just use this isolated case. Like if I believe she's shaming me and I do this work and I see that she wasn't, that it was me, then I should see that I'm shaming her too. Because it, it, it does, it's just reoccurring everywhere. It's pretty horrifying, actually. Yeah, it's a, it's a wonderful thing to work up, but it's a little weird at first. There's only one person out of order in this whole world, and it's me. <laughs> Damn. And that's good news. It's, it's empowering, you know? It leaves only one person to change. And it's the one you're with, so it's also convenient. <laughs> so it's, it's never the other person. Ever. Never, ever, 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 ever? No! <laughs> She won't even, she, I'm not even touchable at this point. <laughs> not ever, 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 never. No matter what she says, no matter what, what she does. No matter what. <laughs> and, and don't. <laughs> it's like, what I love about this exchange is, is, is it's something that you are, are, not going to believe, you're going to test it. Hopefully you're going to test it. And that's what I'm putting out here. Prove me wrong, please. Sit every day in your practice. Prove me wrong. Open your mind to questioning what you're believing and see what you're left standing with or sitting. It can never be. Well, the truth is I've been suffering so much that I have no choice but yeah. to try something yeah. else. Because as Dr. Phil would say, how's it working for you? <laughs> and it's not. In a lot of ways. I made you laugh, that's great. <laughs> Love how your mind works until it's yours. You're not going for it. That's that's it. Okay, so look at the next one. Jane is controlling and disrespectful. I'm can't even say it with a straight face. <laughs> <laughs> I am controlling and disrespectful. Mm. In that moment. Of me and of her. Yes. Both. You weren't respecting the evidence, your own and hers. So in this whole thing, you're not saying that my action was, was wrong. No. You're simply asking me to look at my I'm simply, I'm, I'm simply, it, it, it's like the best, scenario here for me that you could come out with is just to notice when you believe these thoughts what life is produced out of that all of life is produced out of that and eventually we come to see it's an illusion but we're in kindergarten So how do I react when I believe the thought my mother shamed me? Immediately it hits the emotion, doesn't it? Immediately. And also, when you think the thought my mother shamed me, you get other images that are of a past. 
and you see that movie, and you don't even know it's going on. Innocent, innocent, innocent. And as you witness that, you experience these emotions, and it all goes into what you're believing in this moment. And the emotions that happen in it, and those images, and what you're thinking, would convince you that you're right. And you immediately become that victim. And so does she. In inside of you. And it all needs to be cleaned up so we can start over. And it doesn't take that long. And it, it would sound like this, Mom, you know, I just, I, I just, I've been looking at myself and I just noticed when we were on the phone and you were so worried. I can see it now. You were so worried about those, about me, our discussion, you know where I'm going with this, the appendix, all of that, okay? And you were so worried about me. And you said this, and you said this, and I met you with some really, with some things that, you know, I hurt you. I said things that were unkind, and a great deal of resistance, and for that I'm sincerely sorry. And I can see now, you know, how worried you were. And I don't have to tell her the part where I thought she shamed me and all of that. That's my stuff. But I, I want to admit what I find in these worksheets. To admit it, make it right where I can, start over. And the, make, the way I make it right is the next time I think she's shaming me, I do a worksheet. If I'm not... As, you know, if, I'm, if I don't wake up to it in, in the moment. And that's how I make it right, and I start over again. Okay, and that way, the reason for that is it gives us an opportunity to live it out. And that's a beautiful thing about, like, confession. You know, Mom, I shamed you. And my tone of voice, and for that I'm sincerely sorry. It really hurt me, and I apologize for that. And so you're getting, your cells are getting it. Everything is getting it. And the ego just, it just dies and dies and dies. And you do it when you're ready. You know, it's, let's look at the next one. And again, self-realization until it's lived. What power does it have? I don't ever want to feel that I made the wrong decision. I don't ever want to feel... So let's look at number five again. Turned around in that moment, I am... I am controlling and disrespectful of me and of my mother. Yeah. Good. Okay, and the last one? I don't ever want to feel that I made the wrong decision. I don't ever want to feel so affected by my mother's opinion. I'm willing to. I'm willing to feel that I made the wrong decision? Yes. Could happen, especially up against your mother. You know, beyond what you're believing, maybe you do respect her and you do love her. You do love her. There's nothing you can do about that. That we lose. I mean, I mean, you lose. Until you catch up with that, you lose. You're never going to win that one. So, so she's going to keep putting in your face. It's like our mother holds those, but those buttons, and so they're the, they're, they're the ones to hang out with the most, you know? Once you learn how to question what you're believing, she'll just, she, you know, it's like an enlightenment on steroids. So she asks something, I feel triggered, and then I could say, that's a great question, Mom. What well, would only, I have? only if you can hear the question. Because your mind will override that. Like she's getting nosy. She doesn't trust my judgment. She's this, she's that. She just wants to shame me. You know, those things belong on a worksheet until finally when she asks you a question, you can actually hear it and answer it. That is listening. Sound like inquiry? Answering the question. Sound like inquiry? Those people in our lives, they bring us a lot of questions. So, I'm willing to? I'm willing to feel that I made the wrong decision. I'm willing to feel so affected by my mother's opinion. 
because it's painful, it can bring you back to inquiry, wake you up. I look forward to. I look forward to feeling that I made the wrong decision. Because it's going to hurt. And it'll put you back into a worksheet on whatever situation that you're into. I look forward to... I look forward to feeling so affected by my mother's opinion. Oh, exciting. (laughs) I'm not there yet, but maybe I will be. Well, uh, would you agree that um, that she may have another opinion? Yes. Okay. So, so you know, there are two ways of like avoiding our mothers, or just like that with our mothers, defensive and very separate, or there's being willing to, meaning just let them be them. Anything that upsets you belongs on paper. It's a worksheet. She will enlighten you if your mind is open to it. Okay, so what is something your mother, what is something, it's like your mother shamed you. Can you find one place where she did shame you in your life? Yes. Okay. And are you are you open to sharing that? I guess so. Yeah. Okay. And what did she say? Um or do? She and my father both said they were um heartbroken that I broke their hearts when I was in a relationship with another woman. So So you be my mother and tell me that. You be my mother and tell me that. You be your mother and I'll be you. Okay. And tell me that. Saskia, your father and I are just heartbroken. And I'm really good at imitating her, by the way. So this is how she really sounds. (laughs) Saskia, your father and I are just heartbroken (gasps) that you've chosen this. And we we just can't understand it. We don't think it's the right thing for you. Oh. You're breaking our hearts. Oh, mother. It must be very painful for you. Is there anything I can do? <laughs> well, yes, I think you could stop mm-hmm. this relationship. It's very upsetting mm-hmm. to, to your father and I. You know, I'm so sorry for that. And I'm not willing to give up the relationship. Is there anything else I can do? <laughs> Damn, you're good. <laughs> am I, am, you know, literally. Yeah. I'm, my mother's in pain. My father's in pain. They're believing. You know, how dare they want what is in my best interest according to them? But what does that have to do with me? So I just let them say their thing. Like you could do anything about it? <laughs> They're believers. Here's what, here's what I'm hearing, as I said across from them. Here's what I'm hearing. My parents are in pain. They're believing that I hurt them. There's nothing I can do about what they believe. Maybe there's something I can do for their pain without changing my life. It's like with believers, even if you change your life, they're not happy. Yeah, because I've tried that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and it don't work. Okay, so any time she said you did it wrong and you did it another way, we're on the same page, right? Okay, who made the decision to do it another way? Mm-hmm. You know, I want this clear. Like, it's like, let's say you broke up with this person because your parents were hurt. Who made the decision to break up with her? And mm-hmm. who got the blame? My mother. Yes. yes. Yeah. Now, here's the life of a believer. Your mother says, your actions are hurting me. You made the decision to shift your life. You blamed her. The difference between when I heard it and you heard it was, I 
honored where my parents were. And I listened to them completely. They're in pain. Okay? I didn't believe. I wasn't believing what they believed. Okay, I want to say that more clearly. If I believed, my, my parents say, you're hurting me. If I believe that, my life just tumbles into inauthenticity. So I lose self-respect, and I blame them. I'm out of touch with myself, I blame them. But if your parents say, the sky is blue, who believed it? Me. So this is about taking 100% responsibility for you. It means I cannot blame you for anything that goes on in my life. I am responsible. You say the sky is blue? On planet Mars, everyone believes it's red. Well, let's say on planet Earth, everyone believes the sky is red, but my parents tell me it's blue. Now I look like a freak in the world. It's their fault. Is it their fault? Or the moment I believe, didn't the sky become red? Or blue, whatever I said. <laughs> you understand? Yeah. Yeah. So the believer has a rough time. It is, that's where we were born into this life of suffering. And so now when we're questioning what we believe, we're going back to where we came from. It all gets straightened out. And if you can take the journey you've been on, you can certainly, you can certainly reverse it. You can certainly turn it around. Bring you back too. Your beautiful self. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so full of courage. What a healer you are. Thank you. Good to know there are some clear doctors out there, huh? <laughs> mm. Hey, any questions? Any? Yes. That was really uh, <laughs> great for me. And so many things came up for me. I'm, I'm lucky enough to be here with my mom. I'm 46 years with my mom. And there were s almost 40 um, where I found myself sounding in a similar way. Yeah. So I so appreciated the work today. And I'm, I'm, I regret that. Why didn't I find the work earlier? It wasn't time. <laughs> yeah. As I get close to yeah. 50. Yeah. <laughs> You were busy believing your thoughts, and hopefully the next 50 will be questioning them. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.